In this video, I wanted to take a look at an alternate approach that we can use when working with the LFE channel and Dolby Atmos in Persona Studio One. So in another video, I talked about setting up a dedicated LFE bus or LFE send as per Dolby's recommendation. And basically for the gist of it is that if you wanted to send to the LFE, instead of using the LFE send that exists on the actual surround panel, you would use a regular send and you could create just a bus channel which gets pre-filtered. And then we are isolating the LFE only on that bus channel and that is getting sent out. But it is a filtered version of the low end content which is just a good practice to have in general. That being said, in Studio One, there's always a different approach that we can take when trying to accomplish something that is done one way in another DAW, Studio One usually has an alternate approach that we can take. So what we're going to do is we are going to recreate a similar workflow, but instead of using a dedicated LFE send and a dedicated LFE bus, we're actually going to do this by adding the same EQ or the same filter, low cut and high cut, on the main outs using the splitter in channel split mode. So in order to do this, I'm going to click the plus inserts on the main outs and let's search up for the splitter. Now for the splitter, I'm going to change it from normal to a channel split. Now this will obviously give me a lot of different channels over here. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this at the very, very top. So now we have a splitter and it's in channel split mode. So we have access to the individual branches or the individual streams of this channel. So now what I'm going to do is let's drag and drop. I'm going to use the limiter because I think it's just good, good practice to get into in general. And also we will use the pro EQ. And now I've simply dragged and dropped that over to the low frequency channel. So what this means now is that our low frequency channel has individual processing that's being applied on just this stream or just this branch. So this is a little bit confusing, but I'm gonna demonstrate this in a moment. So if we go back to our main drum loop that we have over here, let's deactivate this send. And actually what we'll do is we'll just hide this entirely. We don't need this. It's not being used in our project anymore. And we'll ignore this LFE send as well. So now if we listen to our drums, you can see that these are only coming out of the left and right in terms of our main outs. So now if I wanted to send to the LFE, in this case, first thing I need to do is make sure that this is active. So if we click this, now this send is active. Now we are using the send on the multi-channel panner versus our dedicated send. So let's dial this up slowly. As we dial this up, notice that we see the LFE pop up for a moment. Now I'm gonna do something just momentarily so that we can kind of visualize this a little bit better. I'm gonna close the spectrum meter just for a moment. And let's go to our mix tool. And the mix tool is happening after everything. So if I just open this up and we go back to our splitter routing for a moment, notice what's happening. We have a splitter, all of the channels are getting split. We're, we're applying the processing to the LFE channel only. And then we have a mix tool. The only reason I have mix tool here is not to confuse anybody, but it's quite simply so that I can isolate the LFE channel. So now we're listening to just the LFE. That's all we're listening to here. Now I'm gonna pin this and let's open up our splitter again. So we'll open up this channel right over here. We'll go to our splitter. We'll bring this up to the top over here. And now if I make any changes to this one, so for example, let's pin the splitter as well. I'm gonna open up the Pro EQ that's being used on the LFE channel. And let me bring the gain all the way down. You can see that this decreases. So now we're barely seeing this come out. So this is an alternate approach that we can take. Now, a couple things that I wanna talk about with, with respect to this particular workflow. Number one, I guess it's cleaner in the sense that if we wanted to not have to worry about creating a send, we could actually use the LFE channel that exists on the surround panner for any channel that we have. We have an LFE send here, why not use it, right? All we have to do is make sure that it's activated. And then we have the peace of mind that we can use the LFE send from within the surround panner. And also we have the peace of mind that because we have applied the splitter, and because we have added the Pro EQ, which in this case is filtering off as per Dolby's recommendations, the same frequencies, uh, which is 120 at 24 dB in terms of a high cut or low pass filter. And we have linear phase EQ at 20 Hertz, and that is being applied over here on the low end. So we have that peace of mind 
that we're still filtering, and we know that whatever's being sent to the LFE is not going to be full-range content. It will be filtered correctly. There is one area, though, where for me, this workflow, I wouldn't say that it falls apart, but that it, it changes things a little bit. Let's say for a moment that this track over here, which is the drums, let's say for a moment that we wanted to have access to be able to use the LFE to enhance. So we're hearing this right now. What happens if, though, this wasn't actually going to the bed? What happens if we were using a spatial object panner? Take a look at what happens over here. When we're using a spatial object panner, which is an object panner which sends directly to the Dolby Atmos renderer, we no longer have our LFE send, right? So if I come into the mix tool, notice we're soloing the mix tool out over here, but this is going directly to the objects. So the idea here is that we have an LFE send if something is sitting on a multi-channel, if it's going and being routed to the bed. We have that send. We don't have the send though, if it is being routed directly to the Dolby Atmos renderer as an object, we no longer have the LFE send. So that's why in that particular case, I think it makes a little bit more sense to use the send because if we do use the LFE send and we activate this, now notice that our LFE, we're able to route the actual channel as an object, which goes straight to the Dolby Atmos renderer, but we're also able to use an LFE send, which can go out of our LFE channel from the actual track itself. And because of the way the sends work, we kind of have the best of both worlds. So I guess it really depends on how you'd like to work. For me, I will be using a dedicated send in 100%. I will be using that across the board. That being said, I guess for the sake of how easy it is to quite simply add a pro EQ to your LFE channel on the main outs, then technically speaking, if you did it this way, you wouldn't even need to necessarily pre-filter your bus channel. You could still set up a send to be used, but you could just add your EQ. I have a limiter on here just for sake of kind of safety, but you could still add your EQ using the splitter tool. And then you would have peace of mind that it is being filtered for sure. But I find it's a little bit easier just for me to visualize by seeing everything here and seeing the routing on an actual bus channel. So Two different approaches to accomplish that, and the only real difference between the two is that if ever you're using or you're routing something as an object, which means it goes directly to the Dolby Atmos renderer, then we lose our LFE send from the actual panner. And if we're using a dedicated bus, we have access and we can do the workflow where we're sending something out as an object, and we can also use the LFE send if we wanted to enhance the low end of anything that's routed as an object. Two different approaches that we can use. Which one is better? I don't know. I'll let you decide. Either way, I wanted to make sure that I did a video so that both were covered and you could make your own decision. Hope you enjoyed this, and we'll catch you for more in the next video. Cheers.